Hey, this is Miss Chang. Uh, welcome back to Chemistry. So I know this distance learning is new, so please feel free to ask me or your teacher about questions. So if you have Mr. Piety, you could ask Mr. Piety, or you could ask me. And if you have Miss Gibta, ask Miss Gibta or me once again. So um, my email is on my Google Classroom. If you don't have me, my email is Lillian.Chang at mcpsmd.net. And here Here's the video to describe uh, this week's lesson. So once again, this assignment is part of marking period three that has been extended to April 17th. So this week's assignment is a classwork assignment called Energy Forms and Changes FET. So we're going to do a FET simulation. It shouldn't take you more than uh, 45 minutes. So, But since it's a Google Forms, you have to do it all at once because it won't save your answers. So this is for the week of uh, April 6th to April 12th. And make sure you turn it in before Sunday at... Um, 11.59 p.m. or else it ends up being late. The deadline for this assignment is going to be Monday um, the 13th at 11.59. We will be holding office hours so twice a week. Um, the memo will be posted on Google Classroom. So if you have my class, I have a Q&A sheet detailing um, office hours. Those are not mandatory, but if you have any questions about how to answer them, please feel free to reach out. All right. So, uh, the objective for this assignment is that students will be able to describe different forms and types of energy uh, to explain what heat loss is and identify examples of heat loss, and finally, to describe the concept of energy efficiency. So, all that information is posted in the beginning of our Google Forms assignment that you found on Classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and read the directions, and I'm going to walk you through this step by step, but I'm not going to answer all the questions for you. I just want you to be familiar with what we expect from you for this assignment. So uh, it tells you to access the FET simulation, energy forms and changes via the following link to answer the question. So when you go ahead and click on this blue hyperlink, it should pop up this FET simulation called energy forms and changes, and it should work on Google Chromebooks. And you're going to click the play button. So uh, for this activity, we're going to start off with the intro. So you're going to click intro here. And what we want you to do is to click the energy symbols and then for you to click and drag the thermometer onto each of these items. So we want to monitor the changes in temperature as uh, we do uh, play with this interaction. So I'm going to go back to the form. So once again, you do need to enter your information to get your credits. I'm going to write down my information. Of course, I'm not going to grade myself. Uh, make sure you choose the correct period and you click next. So I made the form so that it is on a single page so you can see what questions uh, are being asked from you before you submit it at the end. Most of it is going to be multiple choice, but some of it's going to be short answer. So that we're going to ask you to think about what um, to explain what's going on. So just like I explained earlier, you're going to click on intro first, and then we want you to click and drag those thermometers onto each um block as well as the water and olive oil I'm not going to really deal with the olive oil but it'll be cool to see and make sure you click that energy symbols so that you see the e inside each of these objects that's going to be very important so um first part is for you to heat up this iron block so you're going to put it on top of one of these burners and you're going to heat it up and then you're going to try to see what is the flow of energy in this um, simulation right here. So this activity. So you see here that the little E's are popping up. Is this showing energy going into the system or out of the system? So you're going to choose your answer based on that. Then once you're done heating this block, you're going to... Uh, once again, you're gonna, we're going to ask you to describe this as either an endothermic or exothermic process. So we defined those two terms before we left for this quarantine break. If you don't remember what they are, feel free to Google it or look at your notes. And you're going to answer that question based on that. So once you are done heating the block, we want you to dunk it into the water. See what happens to both the temperature as well as the little E's once I put the uh, block into the water so pay attention to both 
thermometers. If you didn't see that, there is a reset button, or you could actually redo this again. Um, so once you dunk it into the water, you can describe the transfer of energy to and from the system and surroundings. What's going on there? What's happening to the thermometers? Is that endothermic or is it exothermic? So I just did it again. Look at me. Boiling water. Okay, so once you do that to the brick, uh, to the iron block, excuse me, you can also do it to the brick. So we want you guys to um, see what happens to the brick. So I like to actually just restart at this point. So once again, iron block, brick, water, and we're going to click the energy symbols. So I want to heat both of these equally at this point, but link heaters. So you don't have to do this, but we want, to, want you to eventually compare um, does the brick react the same way as the iron? Does it heat at the same rate? And does it transfer energy at the same rate? So like it looks like we're adding the same number of energy packets to both of them, but is the temperature going to be the same? So once you've done, done that, we want you to stick it into the water and see, does it have as much of an effect uh, whenever the brick turns into uh, is put into the water? Does it have the same amount of energy transfer as the iron block does? We want you to compare your observations. So that's going to be for the first part. And then so the second part is for you guys to click on the second tab on the bottom. It's called systems. So systems icon on the bottom. And then there's going to be four scenarios at the bottom. So faucet, sunlight, kettle, as well as the bike. Make sure you um, read the questions carefully because there's a lot of options going on here. We don't want you to uh, have to restart everything. We're going to start with the faucet. So on the bottom of your screen, excuse me, you're going to click the systems right here. And then we get the faucet by default. So once again, we want the energy symbols. And you're going to turn on the faucet. So there's a little plunger up here where my cursor is. And you're going to pull it out and then see what happens. So uh, we want you to look at the five different types of energy, which is up here. So you got gray E symbol stands for mechanical. The blue stands for electrical. The red is thermal. The yellow is light. And then the green finally is chemical energy we want you to pay attention to the energy transformations from the source so the source is one of your four sources in the bottom left here and then uh the, the final output whether it's going to be heating water or it's going to power the incandescent light so you can click on something else to switch it out so there's my incandescent light and uh, i also have a fluorescent light so I'm gonna allow the, uh, click on that after my light bulb turns on, and then last but not least, we also have a fan. So for each of these simulations, you have to let it run for a few seconds to be able to see the full effect. It doesn't happen instantaneously, but it won't take more than a minute, and then see what happens to uh, the simulation. All right, so you're gonna do that for the faucet. So for most of this, we're gonna stick to either the water boiling or the uh, fluorescent light, but we're also gonna be using the incandescent light. So if you do not, uh, if you're not familiar with the difference between fluorescent and incandescent, the one that looks like a bulb, a literal light bulb, like an upside down pear, is the incandescent light right here. And then the fluorescent light is the spiral light bulbs that most of us are familiar with. Um, so whenever it's time to use the solar panel, make sure you switch it out to the, uh, the solar panel when you're using the sun because the sun cannot power 
the wheel. <laughs> and then also uh, you gotta switch it back to the wheel whenever it's time for you to use the kettle and you're gonna heat up the kettle to power your light bulbs. So for this part of the simulation, we'll, we'll go back to the faucet now. What you want to do is for you to describe how the energy is transferred from the source to um, our final origin. So for this scenario, heating up the water. So when it's time to type, so here you have a question about what type of energy does this faucet generate? You look at the symbols. If it's gray, it looks like it's mechanical. You could choose that. So we gave you an answer here. So the second question right here for the systems part is describe the process of how energy from the source is used to heat the pot of water. Describe any energy transformations along the way. So I'm gonna look at this and you could type, I like to use my search bar to type in my answer, but I'm gonna look at this and see how energy is being used to heat up my pot of water. So right here, I'm gonna say that the faucet, oops, that doesn't work very well. So the faucet, is producing mechanical energy. So you see these little gray packets and then it's used to turn this wheel. So the wheel also uses mechanical energy and then eventually that gray energy turns into this blue energy right here, which is electrical energy. So that rotational energy here, also known as kinetic energy, is being turned into electrical energy. And that electrical energy is going to eventually power this little coiled burner down here. And this coiled burner transforms the electricity to thermal energy, which heats up the water. We can see that the water is being heated up because the thermometer was going up. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type it out. So let's go ahead and say that. So mechanical energy from the running water is used to turn the wheel which transforms the mechanical energy so i didn't spell mechanical right into electrical energy the electrical energy then powers the burner which transforms the electricity into thermal energy which heats the water so just to summarize it i like to just uh show the energy transformations along the way so we're starting off with mechanical energy and i'm going to just show the arrow to show that that mechanical energy had to turn into electrical energy before finally turning into thermal energy. So please make sure that you give a thorough explanation. Um, one or two sentences is fine, but don't just condense it just to mechanical, electrical, thermal. So there's a little more going on here than that. So you're gonna do that for the first simulation with the, uh, with the faucet. You're gonna do it for the one with the solar energy the kettle, then the bikes. Make sure you pay attention to what out, outputs that we ask you. So um, towards the end, so when you're going to the home stretch, we're going to ask you questions about um, the difference between the incandescent light as well as the fluorescent light. So it's going to act a little differently. We're going to ask you questions such as whether or not 100% of the energy is being transformed into light energy so does all the energy so if i use the biking girl so she's gonna bike does all of the energy that she's uh, using from her body is all of that turned into light energy or is some of it quote unquote lost along the way so you want to pay attention to this picture does all of it turn in to light energy, which is what we want to use. And if it doesn't, we want to talk about something called energy efficiency. So at the end of this, we want you to summarize your learning just to apply it to something that happens in real life. So these days you see a lot of these spiral light bulbs or fluorescent light bulbs because of the Energy Independence and Security Act in 2007. So before that, most of the lights were 
incandescent nowadays are mostly fluorescent and LED. And we want you to just kind of use the simulation to explain why is that the case. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Once again, you have my email or come into office hours. Those will be posted online. Thank you for watching.